I am Genetically Modified Skeptic, and you're watching Atheist Edge. Atheism, when consistently lived out, leads to self-deprecation or despair. Self-constructed meaning is only a stopgap. Yeah, this is one of those ones, exactly what I mean when I say that she does not uh, keep her herself as an atheism. She, she takes that and she extends it to atheism as a whole. She's not limiting it to herself. She's, she's trying to take what she felt and act like all people should feel that way. And that's, we're going to do a whole separate video about it, but yeah. that, that's not the case in the slightest. This is this one of the smoking guns right here. This is it, guys. Go back and re read this one again. Um, first off, citation needed. W where do you come up with that? Second, how fucking dare you? Why grossly mischaracterize this entire community? If that applies to you, that's all. That's per that's fine. Mm -hmm. But the way you worded that. You're, you're blanket generalizing all of us. You know what this is like? This is like, so the last time I was on, we did Romans 1 and the verse that says, uh, uh, God has made himself uh, known through his creation so that men are without excuse um, for, for, for not knowing him. So, and if, if a Christian pulls that out, they say, you know God exists, you just deny him. And you say, I look at creation and I don't see God. And they're like, what this book says you do. They're saying that their preconceived notion trumps what you tell them about yourself. They're not willing to listen. And so when Ordway comes in and says, atheism necessarily leads to despair, and you say, well, I'm an atheist and I don't despair, then she doesn't really have a way of dealing with that. She has this notion based on her own experience, and I'd be curious to see how she would react to people like some of the atheists in our group who, by any measurement, seem to be pretty happy and fulfilled and aren't despairing in the slightest did it catch you off guard last night at the book club meeting so many christians that had read the book and did not get this message like did they just skip over it did they how, how is it it was so blatantly obvious to half the half the group and then the believer half just said no i don't think she speaks for all of you or she spoke for all of you it, it, was, it was one of the few places where she did say atheism does this. But even but when she doesn't come there. out and say it, she implies it all through the oh, book. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But they, the Christians didn't see it at all. They thought she was only specifically talking about herself and her journey. Yeah, and, and it's possible that that was a... I, I hope for some of the believers there that may have agreed with... Ordway or had the same stereotype as Ordway that maybe they're wrong about that stereotype and uh, that's all we can hope for. Take religion out of the picture and everybody spontaneously starts living life in peace? I don't know about you but in my experience peace is not the default state of a human being. She's referring to a quote from Francis Spufford. The, but I would say the most peaceful, the happiest and pro most progressive countries on earth are also the most secular. So there's good evidence that you know, um, she has this Hobbesian view of humanity where we're all just life is short, nasty, brutish. We're all just basically it, it goes to that Christian. We're all broken and evil and we have to we need Jesus for redemption. Yeah, if you want to say that uh, the world wouldn't be peaceful if it was atheistic, then I got bad news for you. The world is religious, and that has caused shitloads of conflict and wars throughout the course of human history. So there but, may not be peace with or without religion. It could but you know the corollary. Religion. You know their response to that is the, the, mo the most brutal dictatorships are then they would say based on atheism, I would disagree. You know, Stalin, Pol Pot, not Hitler, he was a Catholic, but I mean, some of the most brutal dictatorships were atheist regimes. Mm -hmm. I think that was just a byproduct. No one, no one has ever killed another human being in the name of atheism. You could be an atheist and be a brutal dictator, mm -hmm. but it's not because of your atheism. We don't have a book that commands us to kill Jews and homosexuals and Jehovah's Witnesses and gypsies. Yeah, I mean, if you're a brutal dictator, you're going to stomp out any potential source of opposition, including the church. 
So that's not that's a cult of personality thing. It's not an atheism thing. And if you feel the need to oh geez, do we want to list religious atrocities throughout the years? Do we want to talk about the Spanish Inquisition or the brutal treatment of the natives in the Americas by the by the colonizers? Crusades. Do we want to talk about female genital mutilation? Do we want to talk about jihad? Do we want to talk about any of these other things and defend them by saying, well, Stalin was worse? Well, just because something worse doesn't mean your shit don't stink. And Stalin, again, he didn't do it in the name of atheism. It was an, athe he, he, it was an atheist regime, but it wasn't in the name of atheism. Well, he, he wasn't waving a flag with a big red A on it yeah. saying, hey, check out our cool atheist nation. Right. He was just an evil son of a bitch and he, that happened to be an atheist. Mm -hmm. And I'm not defending that at all. And I just don't think you can kill in the name of... All atheism is is just a response mm -hmm. to a claim. There's no reason to kill in the name of that. I, if, if the United States government tried to abolish all religion right now, I would be in the picket line with you Christians mm -hmm. trying to keep it. Yeah, it, it's just a dumb line of argument. There are shitheads who are theists, and there are shitheads who are atheists. And I feel like that's not... You can compare notes all day long, and I just don't feel like it gets anywhere. All I had to do was look at myself and the people around me to recognize that anger, jealousy, insecurity, envy, contempt, selfishness, fear, and greed were deeply rooted in the soil of being. Yeah, and I'm not going to deny that there are selfish people and jealous people and greedy people and angry people um, I'm, I'm glad you found a way to not be angry and greedy and selfish um, but once again that doesn't necessarily mean that atheists are going to have all those negative traits there, there are certainly uh, secular humanists who try and help people and try and improve themselves and they don't feel the need to appeal to a god or have a holy book that gives them the instructions for living in order to make that happen. Again, just what a depressingly bleak and Hobbesian view of humanity. And people wonder why we consider religion to be a toxic impediment to scientific and human progress. I was not aware that the human rights track record of dogmatically atheist countries was... Well, shall we say poor? Man, we keep getting ahead of ourselves, don't we? Yeah, I mean, we, we got into this already, but if, if you want to compare one human rights record with another human rights record, you may find that one is worse than the other, but I don't think you should be acting like uh, quote-unquote Christian nations uh, have their act all together. It's six of one, half a dozen or another for me. Mm -hmm. Government endorsement or imposed sponsorship of any religious ideology does not fare well, historically speaking. China, as far as I know, is the only atheist country on earth right now. I could be wrong. Many have tried it, though. And yes, they've had a human rights record that's pretty bad. But it's similar to any other religious, like hardcore religious theocracy, past or present. All the more reason to support a godless constitution like we have in the United States. Um, the, our constitution is explicit in its lack of government-sponsored religion, and that's why, I, in my opinion, it works so well. Yeah, I mean, if, you, if you want to make the case that Christian, that the U.S. was always a Christian country from day one, like certain local pastors want to do, um, that's cool, but... You can certainly point to times in our history where our human rights record was less than stellar. Uh, we could talk about Trail of Tears. We can talk about Slavery. treatment of immigrants moving in through Ellis Island. We could talk about treatment of women throughout history. We could talk about what life was like before we had labor laws and children were working 20-hour days in mines and stuff like that. There was a, I mean, there was some brutal stuff in our past, and we've certainly improved from there. Um, Segregation, but, suffra the suffrage. The, yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't even get started about you know, institutional slavery yeah. and uh, how long it took us to, and still trying to recover from that. And every one of those supported publicly by politicians mm -hmm. through the Bible. There, there were, there were certainly right. uh, abolitionists who, who were supported by who 
use the Bible to justify their beliefs, but there were definitely slavers who used the Bible to justify their beliefs as well. There were people who used the Bible to justify anti-miscegenation laws, or people who used the Bible to justify uh, being against the civil rights movement and uh, just racism in general. There are people who used the Bible to justify prohibition and being against women's suffrage. And I'm glad we've moved past that to the point where it's almost cute to think about that point in time, but it's certainly there in our history, and we shouldn't be ignorant of that. I once did an experiment. I brought up um, a horoscope, and I asked somebody, what, what's your sign? Oh, let's say it was Aquarius, right? So, but I read Sagittarius, and they went, yeah, that's exactly me. That's me for the day. Mm -hmm. I tell you what. I said, well, I was said, the Bible is written so vague and generalized. It's open to so many possible interpretations. Mm -hmm. Um, it's impossible to nail it down. You can give two sides using the same source material and mm -hmm. having completely separate arguments. Yeah, and I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm glad there were people on the Christian side fighting for evolu for not evolution, people on the Christian side fighting for abolition. But the Bible does not support abolition. It says love your neighbor as yourself, but it also says you can keep your neighbor as your slave. So it, it, you kind of have to ignore all these other verses about slavery and use this one to justify your position. No matter what I turned my hand to, I found satisfaction in nothing. I'm sorry she didn't find satisfaction in anything. Um, if she had found fencing sooner, I wonder if her walk would be different. Um, it, it seems like she... She tried a lot of different stuff, didn't find it, and the more stuff that didn't work for her, the more despairing she became. She found fencing and fell in love with it as an atheist. True. It, it just wasn't enough for her. It, well, and that, that, that's her. That's just her. I, this podcast, man, I did not have any idea how much fun this was going to be, and I love it. And before that, I was... I was a competitive chess player. Before that, I was an MMA fighter and it just, being a Marine. And every, anything I do, I put everything into. And it, it's, it, you know, you, my, you can ask my wife. She, she'll she roll her eyes and say, wow, you, because I really have the tendency to, when I find something, I really hit it hard. But I get a lot of enjoyment out of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd be, I'd be curious in an alternate history because when she, when she got into fencing, that was the same time she met her Christian fencing coats who ultimately led her to Christ. So I'd be curious if she went, if she discovered fencing, fell in love with fencing, but didn't have that kind of Christian connection also in there at the same time, if that would have been satisfactory for her, if she would have found that meaning without then going quickly on to Christianity from that. We'll yeah. never know, but it's interesting yeah. to think yeah. about. But here's how I read that. I'm so weak-minded and indolent that I cannot find meaning and purpose in my own life, so I need someone else to provide it for me. I saw and despised the person I was becoming, and I felt powerless to stop the change. First off, ironic choice of words there at the end, saving grace. And this is you speaking as an atheist. Second, I cannot, can you not see that fencing gave your life meaning? And maybe that wasn't enough for you, but if that was my thing... I can tell you without a doubt that fencing would be my thing and that would give me a lot of meaning in my life, without a doubt. Yeah, and, and she talks about uh, some things about her life that are, are not even specific to her atheism that were causing uh, dissatisfaction. She was in a, a job that wasn't in her chosen field and wasn't fulfilling. When she did have a class of her own, she was snapping at them and losing patience with them and, and that and she knew that that was wrong, but she couldn't help herself. And you, you could tell there was kind of a buildup of frustration there. And uh, yeah, I, mean, I, I get it. Uh, coming from Christianity and feeling like my life was uh, set out for me and had a divine purpose already preordained from before I was even a twinkle in my parents' eye uh, to being put in a position where, okay, now I got to make my way on my own. And I, it's, it's not easy to think about when you think there's supposed to be something more, but you, you can, through experimentation, you can find things that are meaningful to you, even if they're not capital M magical meaning. 
I think maybe it was Richard Dawkins, I could be wrong, was posed this question and he responded, well, I'm looking forward to a really nice lunch after this. Mm -hmm. And that is so terse and perfect to me. You know, what's really interesting, I, I, I'm just thinking of this now, you know, there's in Eastern philosophy is almost the opposite. Like, there's a lot of Buddhists who will find joy in the mundane workaday things of life. They find joy in just presence. That's what mindfulness is mm -hmm. all about. And I used Christian to be a huge skeptic of that, but mm -hmm. I've, I'm coming around. Yeah, I've, 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 I've had that suggested by a therapist before, and I can see where there would be benefit of that. You know, just uh, limiting your perspective and not worrying about all the bigger things. Like that's that's not even a religious thing. That's about good practical uh, advice. And but Christianity is the opposite. It's like go big or go home. If if it's not pointing towards heaven, it's not worth anything. Yep. Increasingly. The view is clear. If life truly has no meaning, then our actions cannot themselves have any meaning either. Well, I mean, it, it's a pretty simple syllogism, if that's the right word. If life truly has no meaning, then our actions cannot have meaning either. True. But what if life truly has meaning? Then our actions can be meaningful. It, it, she, she's basing it on her own uh, despair and her own feelings of meaninglessness, but that's not necessarily all that life has to offer. I'm going to concede something here. I'm going to be perfectly honest. Um, there's a scale, one to said the Dawkins scale, and with regard, it's on your screen right now, um, with regard to Yahweh of the Old and New Testament, I am a 6.99. I'm almost certain mm -hmm. that it's complete horseshit. Now, if you ask me just any type of, maybe not divine even, just super intelligence, let's just go with that. Mm -hmm. That could encompass anything divine, supernatural, or it could be a natural, just a super intelligent. Mm -hmm. uh, and that could even mean pan, panspermia, you know, just a, mm -hmm. uh, that we were... Or I think it could even encompass um, the brain in, brain in a vat that we're a, that we're a simulation created by a higher intelligence. Anything higher than us. With regard to that question in general, at best, I'm like a five, five and a half. And if that, and here's my concession, if that is what drives me to, to have this channel, if that's what drives me to go to an atheist and Christian book club, if that's what drives me to read the Upanishads, the I Ching, the Vedas, the Bhagavad Gita, the Quran, the Bible, then so be it. And, and if you want to call that a need for something more, then you can do that too. But I also say it's not so much my actions that give my life meaning. It's the enjoyment of those actions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in a weird way, I find these kind of conversations like we have with the book club and other interfaith groups, I find these kind of conversations meaningful in and of themselves. And maybe it's just part of being social. Maybe it's just that they're well, they're deeper conversations compared with, oh, did you see what Khloe Kardashian did the other day or whatever. Um, but I genuinely enjoy them and I genuinely get a lot out of them. And I think you know, down the line, when I'm when I'm older and looking back on what I've done with my time here, I'll be glad I had these conversations. Feeling superior is terribly seductive. Once you are there, it's hard to back down. To retreat from the precipice of despair would mean that those people whom you have so enjoyed sneering at really did no more than you. It would mean giving up the intoxicating sense of being special by virtue of everyone else being a fool. This is really a damning and revealing look at your true self, Dr. Ordway. I hate to say it. And to attempt to project these character flaws on the entire atheist community is to commit a heinous mischaracterization. Again, I just can't stress it enough. Um, this is another smoking gun. Yeah, she has this weird... One of the contradictory things that she brings up is that she says stuff that make it clear that she really pities atheists because she thinks that they all felt, feel the same despair that she felt. But at the same time, she considers herself a quote-unquote tough-minded individual 
who will follow the truth wherever it leads, even if it doesn't make her happy. So yeah, what does she say in the book? That there's a there, there's a the yeah. tough-minded and the soft-minded. Right, and a soft-minded just want to be happy. They yes. will ignore the truth. The tough-minded tough will will sacrifice talk. happiness for truth. Exactly. So she considers herself one of these cool, tough-minded people, but she should at least have a grudging respect for atheists who, if they do go her the route she thinks they should go, and are believe there's no God, believe that's the truth about the universe, and they're still unhappy. But she, she just doesn't follow through on that. And in a way, it could be argued that maybe a non-believer that is truly depressed mm -hmm. with his situation could, might be even more worthy of respect because that's that tough-mindedness, that cold, hard logic, the hard nihilist, not the existential Nietzschean nihilist, the, may, the more Hobbesian type. The, the, the more, like, when you say nihilism, yeah, people, the real people nihilism. think the gloom, doom, yeah. what was me. Like, why don't you just get in a warm bath and open up some veins kind of nihilist? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and Ordway should be, if she's being consistent, she should be like, I disagree with you, but I respect your logic. And she's not like that. Not, she just sucks to be you, dude. Yep. My atheism was eating into my heart like acid. Well, once again, this may not be atheism per se. It could just be things that she was unhappy with about herself. And I think that this this comes right after what she was talking about with, um, you know, where she's unhappy with her life and she's getting angry. She's, she's snapping at people. And that's not atheism. That is... The, the, the negative sort of nihilism you just mentioned, that is her own feeling of meaninglessness coming out. And as, as we can't say enough in this broadcast, that's not necessarily or absolutely must be a result of atheism. It's funny. Um, when I was doing some quick notes for this, I must have been in a different place when I wrote this one because I said, replace atheism with personal mental health issues. So I'll read it again. My personal mental health issues were eating into my heart like acid. And I don't, in hindsight, I don't, I can see wh wh what mental state I was in when I wrote that. I, I was, I was increasingly perturbed by her tone. I think when I am biased or thinking irrationally, I think I'm aware of it. And at that point, when I wrote that note, I, I, I am aware now that I was not thinking rationally when I wrote that note. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Admittedly, I mean, we're, we obviously in no position to psychoanalyze her, and it's possible that she did have some mental health issues. Maybe she didn't. We'll never know. Right. But I, I, I will say this much. I have encountered more than one Christian who, um, like after Anthony Bourdain committed suicide, people were saying he committed suicide because he was an atheist and he had no hope in his life. I and, saw a lot of that myself. And to those people, fuck you. Yes, sir. Depression, there, there's, there's colloquial depression, I'm sad about life, and then there's actual medical depression that you can treat with medication. And it, it's a shame that they're called the same thing because they're easy to confuse. But you can have mental health issues whether you're a theist or an atheist. Robin Williams, too. Yeah. When he, when he snuffed it. Mm -hmm. um, yes, another concession. Suicide rates among non-believers disproportionately high. I get it. I'm not saying we're... I'm just saying the majority of us find meaning and purpose, and we live happy lives. Mm -hmm. If there is a disproportionate number of suicides on our side, well, then that's mm -hmm. I, uh, that's part of being, what did you call it, the tough, the, the tough the thing? Tough-mindedness. Tough-mindedness. Yeah, and you, you could have atheists who are committing suicide because they become depressed, um, emotionally depressed. Uh, you could have atheists who are committing suicide because they've been rejected by their loved ones who are still Christians. And why would it affect us any harder than the other way around? Why aren't the Christians that are married to an atheist not committing suicide at the same rate? I don't think there are as many of those as there are, you know, people who come out as atheists 
and their families can't deal with it. And consequences, too. Because when a Christian commits suicide, they think there's huge consequences. For mm -hmm. us, it's just lights out. There might be something with that, too. Possibly. Um, I don't, I don't, I'd be interested to see uh, the statistics on uh, Christians versus atheist suicide. Um, and if there's any indication as to why those Christians are committing suicide through leaving notes, um, I'd be interested to see, well, not mo well, morbidly interested, but I'd be curious to see um, if they're leaving notes behind what their, what their reasons are for committing suicide if Christianity is uh, as hopeful as uh, people like Ordway would uh, have us believe. Atheist Age. What on earth? If that's why you were an atheist, then... Like, atheism wasn't your problem. Ever. Walking the edge of what some consider offensive. <sighs> this, this literally, this one sentence is everything I stand against in the world. Okay. Hmm. But your feelings don't matter here. Only facts. Goddamn train. Edgy commentary on the dangers of doctrine, the foibles of faith. So are the, oh my God. So are the antithesis of those things. The bullshit of belief, the stupidity of superstition, and the idiocy of indoctrination. <sighs> Dogmatism isn't synonymous with atheism. All right, okay, okay, I'm fine, I'm fine. I'm not angry at all. I'm just gonna drink this for a second. <laughs> with razor sharp wit, curiosity, and critical thought, we take an unblinking look at today's religions. We are Atheist Edge. Oh my god, that hurt. That physically hurt me. Oh, that physically hurt me. Okay.